In this video, I will show you how to add a MailPoet newsletter to your site. So what is MailPoet? It's a plugin uh, available directly from your WordPress dashboard and therefore closely integrated with WordPress. It's a sending service similar to MailChimp, which is free for up to 2,000 subscribers. It has sophisticated email templates. It has a full-featured autoresponder system. And the premium version, which is just $99 a year, is compatible with Amazon SES, uh, so-called simple email service, which allows a natural upgrade path once you exceed 2,000 subscribers. It's a very impressive service overall and is my uh, recommended newsletter service of choice for WordPress websites. Now, the MailPoet pricing can be a bit confusing, so I will explain it here. First, there is an unregistered option, which is not recommended as it will send you a newsletter from your host. This is not recommended for deliverability reasons, and also your host might cause you problems, particularly on the larger newsletters. Second, there is a free registered version of the software, which is what we are going to do here. And this allows up to 2,000 subscribers for free and combines their sending service also for free. This is a very good offer uh, comparable to the free MailChimp. Third, there is the premium paid version, which you can purchase and then hook up with Amazon SES, simple email service, once you get lucky enough to build a subscriber base of more than 2,000 and which saves you from the very pricey options that almost all commercial newsletter services ask for. And this is why I like to start people with a free registered version because it's free and yet gives you a natural upgrade path once you hit the major leagues. So the first step is to add MailPoet from your uh, plugins dashboard. Uh, just search for MailPoet. Uh, this is it. I'm going to install now and then activate. Now it, it does ask you whether you want to go through the auto installation menu. Um, don't need, no need to do that because we're going to do it manually in just a few uh, short steps here. Now go to the MailPoet settings menu here and activate the basics tab. Most of these options should work by default, but you may want to verify them, particularly the from, whether you want to put your name or your business name. And then scroll down and look at, uh, you know, look at the, some of the other options. You want to receive notifications for statistics, uh, new subscribers, and so forth. Then go to sign up confirmation. Now you will almost certainly want to enable what's called double opt-in here. However, note that MailPoet keeps two lists by default, and I'm going to show you the list function to illustrate this. These lists are called WordPress users and WooCommerce customers that are not double opt in, opted in. So a WooCommerce customer is anyone who has purchased something from you. Note, however, that free, free memberships or free products are not included in the customers list. However, everyone is included in the WordPress users. This is um, everyone who's ever registered to your site, you know, customers and others. And, you know, and you, you can definitely send them newsletters, although this may not be um, uh, GPDR com compliant, uh, just be warned. So back in the MailPoet settings menu, go to the send with tab and click on get a free key. And we'll just sign up for free to that. And you want to use this link free without premium features. And then sign up now. Enter your information and sign up. Um, now I'm confirming the email and it redirects me to the sign up page. So it's sending us to the MailPoet account page. We're going to add a plan. Repeat this free without free premium features. Uh, we're going to enter our address and name. And then next, we'll choose payment method pay nothing. Uh, thank you for ordering. To complete your setup, please authorize an email before sending. And just authorize your email and respond to that. And back at the MailPoet account, we're going to choose the MailPoet 3. And then scroll down, copy your activation key, and then paste it into the key activation tab of your MailPoet settings. And you're good to go. Now notice that it is sending my premium keys invalid, meaning I don't have access to some of the premium features such as um, real-time stats, but um, I'm, good, I'm definitely set up for using the 2000 free subscriber sending service, yippee. Uh, last thing, activate the advanced tab and uh, look at uh, read through some of these settings, um, particularly the bounce handling. However, if you're using their sending service, the bounce is uh, automatically handled for you. So what we're going to do now is we're going to create a newsletter email and I'll also show you in the same step how to create an autoresponder or else what's called an uh, RSS feed that will automatically send email notifications of new blog posts. 
But first, let's actually edit this list here and call it whatever you want. I'm going to call it uh, WP Academy Newsletter uh, and save. So now I'm in the MailPoet emails function and there's three tabs, newsletters, which is what we're going to do. Welcome mails, that's your uh, confirmation mail after the, the, the subscriber confirms. And the other is post notifications, which is the RSS, the email function already mentioned. Uh, so it's the same idea for all of them. So just start by creating a new email here. And we'll choose a newsletter. Now, MailPoet comes with over 30 different templates, and, and they all are quite nice. Um, I will choose one of them and show you how this works, just to give you the lay of the land. It, it's actually a sophisticated visual editor. And let's choose um, Farley, uh, Charlie and Frank here to, to modify. You can also preview it just by clicking on it. So the way this works is if you hover over the element, on the top here, it gives you the various uh, configuration settings for that element. So this is a spacer. You can trash it. You can make a copy of it. You can move it some other place by drag and drop. Um, and on the right here is the, the container, also known as a layout type. Okay. So just moving down here, this is a header element. So I can actually, this uh, does this show email in your browser? I can actually insert that um, via short code here. Okay, header element within a single column. Okay, another spacer within the column. Here's another spacer within the column. Here's a another image, uh, a text block. Okay, this is sort of the text block, and and so you know so forth as we go down. Here's another image. Uh, here we get into a two-column layout, as you can see here, although it doesn't, would be nice if it actually told you that it's a two-column layout, but I can see it's a two-column layout. Here's an image within the column, another image, text block, or sorry, spacer, uh, and so forth. And, and of course you can drag blocks uh, where you want them to go, so let's try putting a text box uh, just ahead of this, um, uh, this image here, and there it is, right? And you can edit it, as so and so forth. Um, and when, when you're done, you just um, save as template typically is what you do. Okay. And or click next if you want to send the email. So we're going to, we're going to start with a, uh, with a sort of a blank, more or less blank template here um, and create our first newsletter. So I've created a new email. It didn't really seem to have any way of trashing the one that uh, I just created. And let's go down all the way down to the bottom. We're going to select the blank one column layout. We'll start simple here. So let's work with a simple newsletter. We start with a, this is a header element. This is a, then there's a spacer. Then there's an image. Then there's a text block. And moving down, uh, there is a, what's called a social object. Uh, sorry, a divider, followed by a social object, followed by another divider, followed by a footer. So again, to edit any of these, just click. Um, let's go ahead and change the logo. Now, if you click on it, you see I can actually uh, put in a new image address. But just for illustration, let me delete this. And then we're going to drag another image right here after that spacer. And then we'll choose the Rebecca's header image, normally at 600 uh, pixels, and we're done. So let's go ahead and next. This is actually going to send the email. Enter your subject line, uh, choose your list. Now you could choose multiple lists simultaneously if you want. All right. Uh, you know, check your sender email and address and go ahead and send or save draft as close, however, however you want. So it's actually doing it. So it's communicating with, with the um, MailPoet, uh, MailPoet system and it's actually sending you a newsletter from their server. So here's what it looks like in my mailbox. So all looks good. Uh, I'm going to say yes. And we'll submit to actual uh, sending to my entire list. In this case, I only have one person, but it's OK. OK, so back on my emails page, uh, you know, it is sending me uh, open and click statistics, which I'm surprised because this is normally uh, supposed to be included on the paid service only. But you know, regardless, it will send you an email after 24 hours with your statistics. 
And if you wanted to send another newsletter, normally you just duplicate this and then you'd edit the new new email as so. All right. So you just keep on duplicating emails and then um, updating them. So for instance, uh, next time uh, you know you send more text here, uh, you would go next to send this, or you could save as template. It's uh, you know your choice. Okay, last we're going to go ahead and create a form, a sus subscription form. This is done from MailPoet Forms. So the easiest thing to do is just to edit the, the GP, GPDR friendly form. It's automatically going to subscribe to the newsletter. Form placement, you know, that's just informational. You can add uh, additional fields uh, in here below. Styles, but basically here's what the form looks like. This looks good to me. I'm just going to save it. And from there, I just only go to my appearance widgets and drag this MailPoet 3 form into my sidebar. And here is, and to see, it's saved already. And here's what it looks like uh, on, you know, on our sidebar. So easy peasy, and we'll move on to the next section.